that houses the Sendai Citizens Exhibition Gallery. Permanent walls cut maintenance and staff costs to the minimum. Here it is the citizens themselves who install and dismantle short-term exhibitions. They hire the walls for a mere trifle, an exhibition hall for everyone to use, and the architecture demures to community action. On the other hand, the floor above is a dream come true for any exhibition curator. A new layout and a new path can be created for each new collection. The plan is ephemeral. It lasts no longer than the duration of the exhibition and can be changed in a trice with fingertip control. This follows the long-lasting Japanese tradition of sliding walls that can retract to make a living room into a dining room or bring the outside in. A surprise awaits on the sixth floor. A continuous large wall surrounds a central zone. Closed in behind the wall are the administrative offices, two conference rooms and a cinema. Rather than a wall, this is a membrane, translucent and curved like the semi-permeable membrane of a cell. It is an imitation of organic nature, an impression strengthened by being green and by the curves of the furniture and the circular screens of the seats for watching DVDs. Between this translucent wall and the immaterial wall of glass giving onto the city, the architect has created a floating zone, a large ambulatory, where one can stop to watch a film, work, or benefit from the vision of nightfall. Of course, of course, there are dedicated areas, like the library with its rows of shelves, the cinema for films, or the exhibition gallery. But I wanted to emphasize the blank spaces, the areas without signs. In the usual language of architecture that means corridors, foyers, or lobbies, I attribute the maximum number of functions to these indefinite spaces, leaving room for future uses that nobody thought about when the place was being built. It is in the library, where the functional equipment weighs the most, that it is easy to see that the tubes are not just for load-bearing. Like trees in a forest glade, they structure the scene in this artificial nature. They polarize the space, creating places in the middle of the shelving or wide circular areas for reading. These are the supports that allow people and furniture to redefine the space.
After his considerations of lightness and fluidity, Toyo Ito asks himself what architecture can do for those whose address is electronic, or whose connections are by a network, the virtual inhabitants of invisible cities. How can these virtual places be integrated with the actual buildings that house us? Breaking with the claims of modern architecture in the 20th century, the multimedia library at Sendai and its space without barriers is a first step on the way to this immaterial and evanescent architecture that leaves plenty of room for the ephemeral.